Uh, is there a chat box or anything like that that last, you want to? Yeah, last want night, some people were putting things in the chat box, but most people it was just kind of like popcorn. Okay. You know, when people would hear a pause for a minute, they would say something. Um, I know some of the guys I think that played with them actually are going to get on tonight, and they're like, you know, okay, tonight we might tell a funny story or something of Turnsy, you know, and um, yeah. So different coaches even were on here. Um, and so, so it ended up being really, I think, good. Oh, good. Here, this is Rob Murray. Um, let me see what Robbie said. Cade's got to work. Um, and so I'm not sure who Marlene is yet, but I'll wait just, just a minute. Um, but yeah, so Cade and Robbie stayed together last night and I FaceTimed him afterwards and I heard Kay going, um, Robbie, can I ride along with you for work tomorrow? Mm. <laughs> so I think they just, you know, at least got comfort in being together. And that's where it's like, yeah, just making sure like nobody's, nobody's alone, you know, going through this, you know, and it's, it's going to be obviously a, yeah, a huge process, a long process, you know, did his parents say anything? To, are, is there going to be an obituary written and any type of, um, you know, I'm sure there is last night. It was like, just so fresh. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. A couple and, of these people sure they're going to set something for donations or something along those lines. Yeah. And yeah. I knew, um, yeah, last night when I asked, it was, um, you know, they don't have services. I mean, they, they're mm -hmm. not sure that they can even do services or that they're allowed to do services. Um, yeah. and so all that, and, but again, it was like within that first four hours, yeah. you know, so, Hey, welcome. All right. So, yeah, so we'll start getting people on here. So it could go crazy here for a minute and Kent, I might need your help sure. to admit people. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, last night I had another friend here that was just uh, because it's like everybody jumped on right at eight o'clock and it was a little distracting. So Mason, what's the weather like up there? Uh, pretty <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I have to go to Milwaukee this weekend and I'm like, I don't, or tomorrow. I don't even want to, I don't even want to look at the forecast. No. Yeah, it's awful. It's just, it's gray and it snows every day. Oh, Good for hockey. How, how was the game last night though? Uh, it was good. We won five to one. Oh, great. Great. Um, mm -hmm. They play honey baked. Oh, wow. Nice. But the 18 honey baked is not um, super competitive. So, okay. Gotcha. And that's what you're with Mason is the 18. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I go up and down. 18. Okay. Yeah. 18s he's on the 18 sometimes okay gotcha gotcha all right we're getting this in there hey mr and mrs turner how are you doing tonight good how are you good. i'm good. not sure why we have a split screen going i know that's kind of funky isn't that weird yeah it is, <laughs> it is. i have two wives that look alike <laughs> <laughs> twins <laughs> Uh, why not right not why not how was your day today i say maybe well how that's the first time i left <laughs> yeah 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 it's, for me it's been a really tough day okay yeah but i'm sure they'll get better soon uh, i think it'll come in waves you know, I'm not yeah. sure you're looking, you're going to be looking for good days soon. Maybe just good, you know, uh, hours, minutes. Yeah. 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 Right, right now, I think it's survival, right? It, it truly Pretty much. Is. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like it's dead. Well, I know, <laughs> I know it takes, I mean, I know there's not as many on here yet. And I know it takes, I'll probably say it again, but a lot of strength for you all to be here. Okay. You no, know, personally speaking to some of these, you know, 
athletes, athletes' families, you know, I know they're all hurting and they can't imagine what you're going through, but it meant the world to them to see your faces and to hear from you. you well, it, it means so much to us to, to hear all the good things. Good. You know, it's, it's tough and it, it, it makes you sad, but happy at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. Learned a lot. I, I do have one fear and that I'm hoping that somebody is not sharing something because they want to be sensitive to us and I want this to be effective for everyone. You know, that everybody's having their own struggles. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear us, Trent, but we just saw the thing you did up there, and that is so, so awesome. I'm glad it made you guys happy, because it, it made me feel a lot better yeah. knowing you could do that. I yeah. don't know if anybody else saw what Trent did, but... Um, yeah, I'm, maybe, I'm up maybe here in Canada, and... Uh, so we got ice in the backyard, and I built. A, I made him a little memorial on my ice for him. Lindsay's uh, buddy made him a memorial on his ice in Canada. This, yeah, this is in Canada. He's got a rink in his backyard. Wow! Oh wow! And the funny is, my son's name is Turner too. So wow. I had to. I had to explain to him what happened and. Yeah. How unfortunate things happen in life, and can't take things for granted. Where in Canada are you, Trent? Just outside Montreal. Nice. Yeah. Like I said yesterday, we got I got to enjoy playing hockey with him, Connecticut for two years, and it was uh, some of the greatest times of my life, to tell you the truth. And like we all still stay stay in contact, which is amazing. And I love it. Yeah. Like I said, he's one of my brothers, and I don't have any real brothers. I have two older sisters, but I have uh, 18 brothers. Yeah. 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 Have, That's, you know. right. That's right. And he was one of them. So. Well, that's that's. that's I'm glad great. I was able to share that. I'm glad uh, John was able to share that with you guys. Yes. Sweeney. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here, guys. I'll, uh, I'll speak a little later. I'll let people come in. But uh, thanks for doing that, Trent. It meant a lot to me, and I'm sure it meant a lot to the Turners. Huh? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <gasps> Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sue. John. Hi, We didn't have a hockey stick to put by our door, but there is a pair of ice skates out there next to Johnny's picture. You saw that. Thank it's you. Wonderful. This is my brother and sister-in-law, Uncle Jim and Aunt Marilyn. Oh wow. Who live in they live in Portland, Oregon. Mm. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. An amazing man. I'm not sure if you were on last night, but I'm sure you'll no. hear some more testimonies tonight. I mean, they're pretty, um, everybody's really hurting. <laughs> a big loss, a big loss in a lot of these guys and girls' lives. I mean, he was just such a bright personality that you couldn't help but love him. I can see that Caitlin's trying to get on. Okay. I was hoping that she had the info. She did. She's at work, so. Okay. Hopefully she'll still be employed after work. <laughs> <laughs> if you smell coffee, that's her. Oh. Uh, um, Mr. and Mrs. Turner, are you okay if I record this in case I'm worried about that it might get full? And um, I probably wouldn't put it anywhere publicly, but if they were somewhere, I put it that, you know, if somebody wanted access that wasn't able to join, are you okay with okay. that? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. 
And I know there were several people that, you know, had practices or those types of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can go ahead and start. Guys, first off, I just want you to know um, the purpose of this is one, I mean, to help start the healing. Um, it's going to be a long, long process. <laughs> I'm not sure to ever be finished, right? Um, because Turnsey was, you know, such such a influential person on all of our lives, whether we're the athlete, whether we're the parent, whether we're the coach working with him. I mean, he just affected all of us um, so powerfully that um, that's not going to go away that, that longing to have him as a part of our life. But we were saying last night, you know, the great thing is because he has affected us that way, you know, we can go on and try to be the turnsy to somebody else and keep his spirit alive and keep him um, living amongst us, right? Uh, go sure. apply what he taught us. Um, but yeah, especially for you that are at school and maybe alone and maybe not in Charlotte or not able to get connected with somebody else um, in person, that's where we wanted this to be there um, because this is pretty devastating news and we just wanted you to not feel mm -hmm. alone. And so we could start this together. And the Turners graciously came last night and are here again tonight. Um, which is just such a sign of strength uh, and has given us strength, but we're here to hopefully help share with them the impact that, that turns he had in our life. So if you're able to, nobody has to feel like they need to, but if you want to tell a story about Turnsey or just say what he meant to you, or even just how you knew him, um, that is completely fine. Um, and if you don't, if you just want to sit and listen, that's, that's totally fine too. So there's no, no real rules here. But it's good to see some familiar faces from last night too. <laughs> hey guys, I guess I'll start. Um, my name is John Sweeney. I joined last night, but uh, I was a little too emotional to really speak. So appreciate you guys doing this again and allowing me the opportunity um to really share my story but um mr and mrs turner my deepest condolences i'm um, sure as you can imagine john meant a lot to me but um really for everybody else on this call um you know i'm john sweeney like i said i'm from uh, connecticut and i had the pleasure of playing with turner on a team called the connecticut junior whalers um being born and raised there is really unheard of for a kid really from anywhere down south to make their way up north and play uh, junior hockey up our way. Turner, another guy named Roby Clark, were the first two guys uh, who I ever really knew to do that. And um, thank you for giving uh, you know John the opportunity to come up uh, and play with us. Uh, made a huge impact on our team. Was a true locker room guy. Uh, you know everybody on the team uh, loved him. He was absolutely infectious. Fastest skater uh, I ever met. Uh, one of the all-time power skating strides you'll ever see. Um, an incredible individual on and off the ice. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that Turner coached on this team. And one of the biggest things that I think is important that I wanted to share was the impact that the sport of hockey and the connections you make can have. Um, you know, when Turner played on our team, it was 2003, 2004, and then 2004, 2005. You know, here we sit in 2021, I'm on this call. Um, you just saw another former teammate of ours, Trent Lahash, Lahash sitting up in Montreal. Um, you know, it's 15, 16, 17 years later, and we all kept in touch. And it's a testament to the bonds you can forge in the game of hockey with your teammates, with your brothers, and they become lifelong friends. And I think that's really important. Um, we've always had our backs. We've always uh, each other's backs, that is. And you know, always kept in touch. There might be lapses in times, a few months, six months, maybe even a year. But uh, one thing I can say is similar to a good friend or any good friend, we always picked up right where we left off. And um, I'm, I'm blessed to have known John and, you know, the uh, forever grateful for all the relationships that hockey's provided me, especially on that team. I played on a lot of, you know, very good junior teams, competitive teams. And there was a uh, no group quite like the one we, we formed that year. Um, and so I just wanted to thank the Mr. and Mrs. Turner for uh, allowing John to make the trip up, up North and play with a bunch of crazy Yankees. He's a boy from down South and uh, you know, consider him and Robbie Clark really kind of the trailblazers 
okay. from uh, guys from the Carolinas up north because after John came up for the younger guys on this call, you know, the, the floodgates kind of really open for a lot of guys from the Carolinas and the Southeast region to really kind of come up and be accepted up that way because they made an impact. Um, on our Whaler team the following year, we probably had half a dozen guys from Virginia, North Carolina, um, you know, markets like that, which was unheard of prior to John and uh, took a lot of, you know, a lot of courage for John to come up and, and, and do that when he did. And, you know, I think originally myself included didn't really take a kid from North Carolina seriously. But um, as many of you know, he was highly skilled and incredible personality and very easy to love. So that uh, quickly went away. So um, for any of you guys that are grinding it out, trying to get better and have aspirations of bigger and better things in hockey, John was a true testament to what you can do if you put your mind to something and, and believe in yourself and, and take that chance. And um, more importantly, again, I just can't reiterate enough how much the bonds uh, you can make in hockey really mean and truly value them. Uh, my junior hockey career was gone in a blink of an eye. And as Trent, former teammate, said before, some of the best years of my life. And so value them, protect each other, have each other's backs and uh, understand how important those relationships on and off the ice and inside that locker room really can be. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Turner, my deepest condolences, all of my love and support and just know how much John meant to me. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, John. Uh, well said. Um, I'm happy to speak. I'm uh, not sure if everybody knows me. I'm Zach Lindsay. I lived with John um, 2003, 2004. It actually follows in great with what John Sweeney was just talking about. Uh, John was one of those guys that came up from Carolina, and, you know, we were excited to see who John was, get to know him. I got to know him probably as good as anybody, if not better. John lived with me for uh, that year in Connecticut when I was there. That was my last year of junior um, and we had some great times together. You want to come say hi? This is my little daughter. Oh, here, come on up. This is Charlie. Hi, hi Charlie. Say hi. All right. Um, <laughs> so I got to know John very, very well. Um, started from the day he moved in the house. Um, like I said, that was 2003. So food allergies, those weren't really around. <laughs> um, high fructose corn syrup was in everything. And did you Dairy. know? Dairy. Yeah, I mean, did you know that the yellow powder Gatorade is different from the blue powder because the yellow does not have high fructose corn syrup? Did anybody know that? I had no idea until I met John. <laughs> So we got to we got to become really close to each other. I'm gonna try to keep it as um, mildly rated as I can. But John and I spent a lot of close time. He would often sit in the bathroom with me when I was going to the bathroom, and we would just talk endlessly about whatever it was. John and I would just talk about it, throw ideas off each other. It was we hung out a lot, and we don't get me wrong, we definitely had our differences. There were times. We weren't as close, but we like John said, you could always pick up that phone and know he was going to be there. I happened to text him this Monday. Uh, I dropped the girls off at school and a song came on Pandora that we used to always listen to in the dressing room. Uh, it was one of the tattoo songs. Trent, you probably remember it. Yeah. Um, and I screenshot it and I sent it to John. And after I sent it, there was another message I had sent to him in December, same type of thing with a screenshot of a song. And at this time, I sent the stern John because I didn't hear back from him. It's not like him not to text back. So I was like, John. And then I got the sad news yesterday about it. And that made a little bit of sense why I didn't hear from him. But it was very heart disheartening to hear what had happened. Um, I didn't get to hear everything that John Sweeney had talked about. Um, I did make a few notes last night. I know uh, at the end of the chat last night I was on, we did do some yoga breathing. Um, I'm all into that breathing and stuff. It didn't really help me sleep, but I did get some sleep. I'm, I'm a big fan of the whoop. All you young guys out there, I don't know if you have the whoop. Hold on, I'm charging. The whoop, if you're out there, it's really great for fitness, monitors your sleep. It really tells you when you can be at your peak performance and everything. I'm not a, an athlete by any means anymore, but for all you young guys training out there, get on the whoop. Um, that's my plug for that, but... Um, I didn't really get to hear what was talked about last night. Um, I'm really sad John's not around. He's not here. But as 
life goes and life isn't the fair. Life's not easy. Um, we have to figure out some kind of positive out of what happened, why it happened. We're never going to know the why. Everyone's asking themselves why, why. There's, well, you can't beat yourself up over why. It's nothing you can do. You can look, oh, well, what if I, you can't live off of what is. It's so, so sad that John isn't here, but it's so great that I get to see all of you people who I have. I mean, I, John and Sue, great to see you guys. It's been a while. Trent and John, and I see John's mom was on. Um, everyone else, I don't know you guys, and I hope that we can stay in contact. If I can ever help in any way with it, life, anything you need. If you need a job for a summer job, come see me. We live on Nantucket. We have a family restaurant. We can put you as a bus boy, as something. If you need help, I'm happy to help. There's all kinds okay. of help. Go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, I said I'll oh, come. come on. I'm ready. <laughs> can you watch your show, please? Um, I'm willing to learn. Absolutely. And um, it's ironic, as I was talking to John Sweeney earlier today, is the Bell Let's Talk Day for mental health. And yes, I'm, sure, take it. No pictures. Just go on the couch, please. OK. Um, today's mental health day. And that's a huge thing. Um, as I kind of mentioned last night, I myself struggled with drinking and drugs. Um, this February is going to be three years. So I've, I've been sober and clean which is great but it's also it's every day is it's not a struggle for me but for other people it is and everyone has their own demons people may think you have a great life on the outside because you look happy but no one ever knows what's going on inside so you can't as we know in the locker room we always you pick on people you give guys a hard time but that you can't have that stigma anymore some guys times like i know i was not a bully but i would often give guys a bunch of shit all the time i was a joke so probably the biggest joker there was but at the end of the day, I would always go up to the person nine times out of ten and talk to him and say, hey, are you, how's everything going? Are you okay? Because it's just, it was all for the fun of it. Everybody wants to have a good time. And like Trent and John, those are some of the best times of their life. That year, my, the year 2003, 2004 was one of the best years of my life. I had so much fun. You wouldn't have thought we were kings of the world in Connecticut, middle of nowhere, Connecticut. You would have thought we were playing in the NHL, how much fun we had. It was unbelievable. We, like – can't even describe but there was one time we were walking from the bus with Craig it was me John Carlos, I think Trent was there and our coach decided to steal a bus from the bus driver <laughs> we took off with it yeah that that, that it, it's like some of the stuff is stuff you 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 should, you'd read in a book but um it really was uh, uh I I feel lucky and fortunate that I was out I'm allowed to share my life with John our path crossed more than once I know my wife and I we lived down in Charleston for a few years and there was time we were having difficulties so I went up to see John and Charlotte I think it was at the time when he was doing the, the simplified band thing after the, the speed skating had had kind of <laughs> up and up and out simplified band stuff and it was before he kind of got found his, his niche in hockey and he was still trying to find his path and he had found his path and he was doing great when every time we got to catch up it was a lot of fun he'd tell me about all of his new students he was working with and it was great I mean John couldn't have had a more positive outlook on life but as I said no one knows what's going on inside of you no one has any idea and that's where that mental health is huge you need to find someone you can talk to if you don't have a friend find a doctor talk to your parents if you don't can't confide in your parents talk to a coach talk to anybody there's people out there that are here to listen i i'll put my phone number out again tonight call me all you have to do is say hey i was a friend of john turner's and i'm going to give you anything you need like i'll be there to listen to you whatever you can call me at three in the morning i'll hear the phone if i don't answer it i'll call you back in the morning leave me a message all you young guys out there if you're in prep school wherever you are east coast west coast like keep in contact with your friends like trent and john and i didn't hear what trent said but john had resonated it we played together. I played with these guys for one year in 2003, 2004. I still talk to them, not every day, but it, things come up. John, I've actually hung out with Sweeney. He came out to the island probably mm -hmm. more than five years ago. It's before we had the kids. We hung out for a few nights. We had mutual friends that knew each other. It's great. The hockey world such a small world. You, I meet people all the time still through hockey out here. And I haven't played. I stopped playing in 2008. And there's still connections that you can meet. It's just such a small, <laughs> small world out there in general um i know i'm probably rambling on i just want you guys to know that there you can't let the, like it's so sad that john isn't here with us but we can build off of this um quick synopsis about my my, my life my mother-in-law uh, was hit 2012 by a drunk driver flown to boston emergency brain surgery recovered my wife says that when she recovers they're going to do the boston marathon they run the boston marathon 2015, she was training for her second Boston Marathon. While she was training, she got hit and killed. 
Um, who would think that someone, and these were all, we live on a small island in Nantucket. If you haven't heard of it, um, it's off of Cape Cod. It's about seven by 14. And who would think that a, a woman would get struck by a car twice within three years and something would happen to her? I'm not trying to say life's easy for anybody. I'm not trying to put anything out on anybody, but there's positives you can always make out of something. We've now since started a foundation for her where we help out kids all over the island with what we can do. So that's something that has made positive out of this. Out of John, something's going to be made positive. All you guys out there, like the guys still playing, I mean, keep in touch with all your friends. Like Sweeney said, like there's people out there to talk to. Do not feel alone ever. If you guys are at prep school right now during COVID, I couldn't imagine going to school during COVID. I did college, took time off, played juniors, college again. I could not imagine being in a dorm room right now. It's got to be hard as hell. Reach out to people. Again, I'll put out my cell phone before this call's over. Text me, call me, anything you want. Or you use me as an outlet, guys. I'm 100% serious with this. Um, John and Sue, I, I love you guys, man. I can't imagine dealing with this for you guys. But like I said, we'll find out a positive out of this. Like, be strong through it all. John would want you to be strong. He's one of the strongest guys out there. Think about all the stuff. He was taking prednisone for years at 16 and 17. Who the, like, he, he was a fighter. We all know he was a fighter. And... Rest in peace, John. I love you, buddy. But John was one hell of an individual from a friend to a coach to a brother to a teammate. God, he, 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 he was there. He was the best there could be, man. He gave you – he was the best combination of a, a fan and a coach because he was pulling for you to do the best you could and also helping you to get there. While he's on your team, he was trying to help anybody get better always. That was just in him. He was a natural-born leader. Like, John was a great, great person. Um, I'm going to end there. I could go on all night. I really could about John. I wrote a bunch of stuff last night. I figured I'd ad lib it anyway, but I pretty much hit all my points. Great human being always there. Like John said, you could text him out of the blue. We text during the quarantine in April, just briefly back and forth. And he's sending me pictures of himself. <clears throat> abs. I'm like, John, what are you doing? This? He's like, I just sent this to 15 girls on Snapchat. I'm like, John, you're the best. You're the best. <laughs> His just outlook on life was amazing. And he's going to be missed. Um, I'm, ha I'm going to be here all night to listen guys and again I'm, I'm happy to you guys to reach out text me anything I'm coaches anyone who was involved with John text me call me whatever it is I can help you guys through whatever I can from where I am and wherever you are I guarantee it life sucks thank but you. we can all get through it you have to be strong mm -hmm. yeah. thank you Zach thank you thank Zach you guys. so I much love you. you love you guys too be strong um, rest in peace John Love you guys. Thank you. Hey, I want to I want to piggyback on a little bit of what Zach said there. Um, and I kind of touched on it last night a little bit, and I'm not trained in grief counseling at all. Um, but there is a thing called grief brain. And I mean, you can look it up, but it, it shows that it's going to affect your memory. It's going to affect your concentration, um, your cognitive level. It can also then it will, you know, can affect your loss of appetite, loss of sleep. I know several are dealing with that right now. And that's totally normal. Okay. That's totally normal. Normal. You need to do what we can to fight it um, and try to put those building blocks back in place just to get like our health back so that then we can have our health to hopefully start then getting our mind back. But if you get distracted, um, if you get feel like, I mean, they say this, like, if you feel like you're walking around and you're like, wait, none of this looks familiar, you know, that's normal. Your brain has suffered a trauma. Um, it's just like, obviously you hockey guys know what it's like. Some of you, unfortunately, to, to go through a concussion, you have to give yourself the grace and kind of take care of yourself a little bit right now, just like you've just had a concussion. Okay. This is a major shock to all of us. Um, and so I guess give yourself that grace. But yeah, then where I was talking last night, Zach, about the breathing, it helped some. I got some, you know, gave me good feedback and said, man, that really helped me a lot. I was able to fall right asleep. You know, not, it's not going to be like a magic thing, but yeah, it can't hurt. So what it is, it's that slow breathing, that inhale through your nose for a four count, hold it for a four count, then exhale through your mouth for a four count. So it basically, it, it soothes your brain. It calms your brain down. And the brain well, is- powerful. It calmed it. It just kept going. <laughs> 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 Hush! <laughs> it helped a couple it's people back. I'm, I'm not complaining. 
Um, but, but I mean, mental health obviously is huge. Huge. Okay. Huge. It's the number one over your physical health guys. Oh, my, if I, I mean, I learned a lot about mental health. Um, right at the end of my time at the Whalers with Craig Johnson, he was our coach. He legend, that guy, he really taught me about sports psychology. And from there, it really, the visualization, which if you guys aren't familiar with it, who's on here, Billy, oh, good to see you on the call, buddy. Um, the, the visualization and mental preparation and mental health is huge. And a lot of you young guys that might be on the call, you're not going to be familiar with it yet, but mental health is huge. I can attest to it. If I knew what I knew now about mental health when I was in my 20s, I'd be a different person. I might have done the same stupid stuff, but I'd be it. You can hang in here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, baby. Hey, brother. I love you. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. It's killing me, man. We love you. Love you guys, too. Help. It's okay, man. <laughs> Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, brother. Okay. Okay. It's okay, Bobby. And that is the thing. That's what we were saying last night, too, guys. I know it's not masculine to cry, um, but it's okay to cry. It's okay to not be okay. I don't care about masculine with my brother, right? So, you know, I'll cry all I want. Cause, uh, I love them both. Yeah. And I know what they've done. So, you know, me and the brother, we've known each other all our lives. We've been through a lot of shit together. And uh, that's a damn good man right there and a damn good woman. And uh, uh, sometimes life just ain't damn fair, is it? No. Damn. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, bro. All right, buddy. Big hug. Thank you, man. Both of you. Sue, I've been thinking about you all day. I, I just can't get you guys off my mind. Oh, thank you. Well, and to introduce ourselves to the rest of the group here, um, John and I have known each other for 55 years or so, uh, maybe 50 years, somewhere in that range. We went to from elementary school on, and after graduation from high school, um, he went to Florida, and I came to Charlotte, and... 25 years later, we got back together here in Charlotte when he, when Walgreens moved him up here. So um, for a while, he was a neighbor and and now just a good friend and uh, that happens to live a little further away. But uh, John and Sue and Sally and I have made reg regular dates to go out and well, pre-2020 to go out for dinner whenever we can or lunch whenever we can. We get together at their house. They come over here and... Um, like Sally said, we've been thinking about you guys all day, and it's. I got to tell you, when you moved here, Johnny was in what was he in the eighth, eighth grade? grade? Eighth grade, and all of the girls, oh my God, they just thought he was the most handsome boy, and they were so jealous of Whitney because she had a closer connection to him. Uh, God bless her. Yeah, he looks like Sue. Well, they were just so jealous of, of Whitney because she knew him better than they knew him. And they just thought he was so cute. <laughs> uh, I guess yeah. he didn't. Uh, it's I guess John he didn't. Got a, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was saying, I guess he didn't take after his dad in that regard. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I don't said, know where it came from. 
like Zach said earlier, you, you, when you play sports together and you, you kind of tend to give uh, a lot of your teammates shit. And at the end of the day, you know, with your, your teammates, your brothers, your friends, but it doesn't mean you can't give them a lot of grief while you're, uh, while you're doing it. So. Right. Yeah. Keeping things a, a little bit lighter here. I have a, uh, story that kind of ties into John being a, a very handsome kid and a hell of a personality but um, I think it was the summer 2005 uh, again I'm from Connecticut but my family had always taken vacations down in the Outer Banks of North Carolina and John because I grew up in Connecticut and that's where our junior hockey team was John ended up becoming an extension of all of my hometown friends because I grew up with so outside of our team he, he you know he became friends with the people I was friends with. Um, so that summer after, uh, I think it was summer 2005, me and a buddy who John also became friends with, we flew down to Charlotte. We, uh, I think we went to your house, Mr. And Mrs. Turner, and then we drove down to Myrtle Beach and uh, we linked up with Chris and I think his name is Jason, if I'm not mistaken, one of uh, John's other hometown friends outside of hockey. And we, we spent the weekend uh, down to Myrtle Beach and then from there, John Turner ended up, turns he came with me down uh, to the Outer Banks of North Carolina and spent the week with my family, which we always did every year, uh, you know, rented a house down in the Outer Banks. So one night, me and uh, Turnsy were, you know, bored and at the age where we were looking for mischief and maybe trying to find some girls. So we decided to watch, you know, walk along the beach. And if you've ever been to the Outer Banks, you know that there's dune decks that usually lead down to uh, a pool that then becomes your house. So we decided to play our own, you know, kind of form of, uh, you know, doorbell ditch. We'd go down the, uh, the boardwalk to your house and we'd jump cannonball into your pool and then immediately run out before anybody woke up or came out and we'd do it to the next house. Well, we thought we were a lot smarter than we actually were. And uh, again, if you've ever been to the Outer Banks, most of the houses are built three, four stories tall. And uh, many of them have hot tubs on multiple floors of the house or the, the decks rather. So we jumped into one of these pools and we, did, we thought everybody was asleep. Turns out there was, uh, you know, uh, twin sisters that were in the second story deck. So John and I didn't see them. We cannonball into the pool. We get out, we try to scurry away. And we hear these two voices say, hey, and this sounded like, you know, pretty girls by the voice of it. So we both turned around. <laughs> they invited us up and, uh, Turns he ended up dating one of the girls for, I don't know, a year, year and a half right after that. So we hung out with them uh, for the night. And um, it was just a funny story. But even in the picture black, they could tell he was a handsome kid. And, um, you know, we, we went out looking for fun. And then uh, he ended up inadvertently finding young love. So it was a funny story that I still think of often. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and for those of you that have joined later here, um, you know, if you want to say anything to the Turners, or if you want to share a story, or even if you just want to um, share how you're feeling, uh, that's okay. And Mr. and Mrs. Turner, I told you last night that Mason Rosado, you knew that name, that he yes. was playing a game, but Mason's on. I don't know if you want to wave, Mason, or say hi, but hi, hey, yeah. Mason. Oh. Hey, hon. Hey. 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 <laughs> and Mason would always come. <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted to say that. Um, I just wanted to say that. Um, you know, Turnsy really had a big impact on my on my life so far, and um, you know, I think I can speak for some of the younger guys on here, like Jason, Sebby. Like we would not be um, anywhere close to where we are without him, and especially this past summer. Um, you know, turns you really had a big impact on my life and I would spend, you know, three or four hours at the rink with him, just doing various lessons and, uh, skating with the older guys. And he always made me feel at home and, uh, he always, you know, invited me out to, to skate with the older boys and make me feel like, you know, um, you know, one of the guys. So, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for for sharing him with me and he was, you know, very special to me. 
you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for trusting in him because he trusted in you. <laughs> I think that's what's so unique to you and wonderful that every one of the guys that you talk to doesn't matter if they're 25, if they're 18 or if they're 12, like turns, you made them feel like they were his favorite, you know? And I think turns, you just had <laughs> 200 favorites, you know, <laughs> 2000, 20,000. <000. laughs> So there's, there's a lot of little uh, orphan hockey players out there that need a, need a big brother, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, out there, do it. Yeah. Hey, John and Sue, um, Sally wanted to be sure that we got on tonight just so that she could say hi to you guys and, and uh, you know, give you her thoughts and prayers. And uh, John, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. So um, as she before. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah. we'll leave you for tonight, but uh, we'll, I'll see you tomorrow, John and Sue. Looking forward to it. Bob, I'll see you too. Love Thank you guys. Thank Love you guys. You. All right. Yes, Love sir, you. Greg. All right. I hope John, to see you. I'm gonna roll too, bro. Uh, I love you, man. You know that. You know I love you. Uh, I know, my buddy. My brother from another mother. All right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, See you tomorrow, bud. Yes, sir. Love you, Bobby. Love you guys. Yeah, and guys, to um, again, doubling on that mental health aspect, uh, if you look up one of the main uh, feelings that's very typical to feel when you're going through grief um, is guilt. You know, could I have done anything? It's the number one main feeling that, you know, people deal with. Could I have personally done anything um, to prevent this? And there's two different types of grieving. There's there's your basic grieving, which is really really hard, um, but then there's complicated grieving, you know. And this falls much more into the line of complicated grieving. So um, I, I just wanted to say that of going, if anybody is feeling like with you know dealing with guilt, that's a very normal type thing to deal with. But there's nothing anybody could have done. Everybody loved Turnsey, clearly. And there's nothing any one person could have done here, you know. Um, so I just don't, I want to put that out there. It's a very normal feeling, but it's one of those feelings that you need to shut your brain off to. And again, like Mrs. Turner said last night, Turnsey was about joy. He was about life. He was about love. And that's what he wants us to carry on. None of the kids should ever feel that way because it was his ultimate joy to be with him. Mm -hmm. So nobody so should feel bad right. about that. Did their part. Mm -hmm. I want to say this is uh, Rich Lazuski, and I see a lot of familiar faces. I see the Raymonds, I see Ruddix, I, I mean, just all the, the Charlotte folks. And, and Zach, you you put things down really well. I mean, he was a fan, he was a coach, but I, I was thinking about this. I'm like, what, what just makes it so different? You've got coaches that, you know, are going to be blowing smoke up your butt and saying, you know, Oh, you know, you're the greatest, you know, you can do better. You can do better. And then you've got coaches who are always going to be, you can never do enough for them. And he was a fan and a coach. If you didn't do it right, he's like, oh, I know you can do better. Can you? And he, oh, let's work on this. Let's work on that. I mean, his skills were amazing. He could translate that and motivate and coach and also be a friend, which is really, really hard to do. I couldn't find the right word even in my notes. It wasn't even a fan. It was, um, he was a, it's like he was just a perfect combination of, uh, it's like your teammate, but it's not a fan. It was like a parent almost, but it wasn't a parent. He was, it's just a, Motivation. special yeah. that he was where he was coaching you, but he was your biggest supporter he wasn't rooting ever against you whether you were on the same team going for the same position anything he always wanted the best for everybody it wasn't about himself he was a great individual i'm sorry to cut you off no it's it's i was just adding on to what you started and it was it was perfect i mean the, the motivational piece was it, there was never any lies in it 
if you sucked at doing something, you'd say you suck, but we can get you better and he'd motivate you. So everyone, I mean, I know Gabe, you're on, you know, you're at, you're at, uh, at prep school. A lot of the kids are there. He didn't, uh, say things that weren't true. And he would point out the stuff in such a way that you wouldn't feel bad about it. You feel inspired to be like, I can do better. He made me feel like I can do better. He would show you the ways. And, and just, just to repeat what everybody else said, um, you know, the, the attitude, um, always, always happy. You can, you know, if, even if he was tired, he's like, ah, I'm tired, but this is great. You know, it, it invigorated him to be on the ice, um, be around the kids. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm as heartbroken as everybody else. And I know it, it everybody, you know, no matter what rink we're, we're up in New York now, but you know, we see old people and it's turns. It was like a, 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 you know, seven degrees of separation from almost everybody out of the Charlotte area. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, I worked with Turnsy. Oh, when were you doing that? And it's Turnsy, 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 Turnsy all throughout. Um, n- never, never a bad word, you know, except for maybe like, Oh, I couldn't get it. He was booked up. You know, I needed more time with Turnsy. So I just want to say thank you. He was, he, he was terrific. Um, loved him. You know, miss him beyond belief. Thank you so much for those words. Oh my gosh. I'm bringing it You're welcome. I'm trying to have a chat and you're not giving me any time. So we're going to come up, okay? Thanks. Hi, so we'll jump in. It's Jane and Tom Raymond. Tommy's on too. Um, he's in another room though at the house. So John and Sue Turner, we met you years ago. What year did 2012, 2013 at Pineville? Um, watching a couple yes. of games because Turnsy coached Tommy um, yes. that, that year. And I have to tell you that year, every, I mean, probably every week, we look at each other and say, boy, but that year with Turnsy was just so much fun. It was just such a fun group of kids. He really motivated all of them. Um, we always tell the story, and I don't know if Tommy told it last night, you know, in the hotels, he was like one of the kids. And you know, talk about mischief. They um, would, I don't know if they were playing knee hockey or they were playing, they might have been playing ding dong ditch. And he was the one like having the kids hide from the security guards, right? <laughs> like, come on, let's run around here, let's run here. And we'd be like, what are you guys doing? But um, we just had such confidence that the kids were in such good hands because um, they were young and he just, he, he, he took them and um, made them shine. And I know Tom, you have a lot of specific thoughts because you, you got to coach with them yeah, that I, year. I coached with uh, Turnsy, uh, a peewee team actually that my son was on as well. But uh, building on what my wife Jane said, I loved the way he could interact with the kids especially in the hotel rooms and the hotel lobby and the hallways after the games. He would hide, he would jump in the elevators, he would ring, ring the bells, he would do all the mischief things that kids do. And they really loved him. He was like the Pied Piper. <laughs> oh, he's, and was, oh, he was 36 like, going on 16. Yeah. yeah. Was, no question. Hey, could, I, could I add something to that? Sure. Like the first thing, like, when I got to Connecticut, we, I had to jump on a bus and go to go on a road trip with the guys because I showed up late in the season. And my first experience with all the guys on a trip, we were up in a tournament in New Hampshire and we had a super nice hotel, outdoor swimming pool in the winter. And we had the bottom floor of this hotel. And the first time I ever experienced what, what they call a leaner is where you fill up the garbage pail full of water leaning against the door, knock on the door and run away. And then the floor gets soaked. It was Turner that did it to me in my room. I'm, I'm standing there, my floor soaking wet. And then, so what we do? Every room had to step it up. Someone would go get a bigger bucket. And then we did it. Every single room got it. The next day, the hotel staff was like, oh my God, we must have a flood going on. We must be flooding out because all the floor is all soaking wet. And that was Turner. That was the first one to start it. And then everyone else had to do it. So that's funny you said that because he was teaching the kids the right way. And I'm sure he taught them not to rat out each other. If this comes, <laughs> you say, it wasn't me. I don't know who it was. And then you go yeah. tell everyone, better watch out, security's coming. See, now the real Turner's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did that same thing at a basketball camp with Greg, who was on earlier in Jacksonville in 1972. 
Oh, so I guess that's where you learned it from, eh? Yeah. Well, I don't remember telling, but I might have. <laughs> I might be dating myself here, but uh, along those lines, Trent, I remember some of our locker room antics um, before two-piece hockey sticks, or I guess when uh, two-piece <laughs> hockey sticks were still a thing, before one-piece graphite sticks came out. You know, there's kind of this period where some guys could afford the one piece, some guys couldn't. But if you couldn't, you used to have to, you'd have a, a graphite shaft and then usually a wooden or a graphite blade. You use a heat gun, you'd heat it up and you could, you know, change your blade out that way. So one day Turner, we had, you know, multiple heat guns on our team in our locker room. You know, with the rookies, he would heat up the, the, the blades or the shafts of uh, all the guys who had two pieces. And with all the rookies, he'd fill the shaft with water on the first day of uh, practice. And then you'd put your blade back in. So these guys, you know, the stick is the last thing you grab after you get all, all dressed to go out on the ice. So these guys had no idea. They'd get all dressed, they'd be brand new rookies, and they'd go out for their first practice or their first game. They'd go to grab their stick. You know, it was like a wet log, weighed like five pounds, it was filled with water. And we'd just be laughing and laughing. And to Trent's point, you know, nobody ratted each other out with any of these locker room or team antics, but, you know, Turner was always a, you know, an, an instigator of that, but it was all love and, and always funny, but that was one of the tricks he loved was uh, taking the blades out, filling somebody's shaft with water and then putting the blade back in. Oh my gosh. Uh, Soaking the gloves before practice to the guys that showed up late to practice to trying to rush, tape all their stuff together with clear tape. So then they're rushing even more to try to get on ice. Uh, yeah, that's, what, that's, that's one of the reasons why he would show up super early so he could get these things done. Early, <laughs> early days early. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Turner among, I mean. But sometimes he would even wait till everyone's out of the dress room after practice so he could do this, so he could be pre-set up for the next day. I mean, it was like a job for John and I. We would get to the rink like hours early and be the last ones to leave every day. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember having to uh, check my skates before getting on the ice to make sure there wasn't clear tape on my blades. That was another. That was an old, old famous trick too. You get on the I ice, I like take one stride. I still get it today. Yeah, you look like Bambi on ice, you know. And uh, that was another Turner favorite. <laughs> well, guys, love guys, to have let, fun with it. Let me let me jump in and switch sports just for a second. Uh, my name's Doug, and I'm an old friend of John and Sue's also. And uh, we would uh, play golf with, uh, I called him Junior. You guys obviously call him Turnsey and Johnny and John. I called him Junior. Uh, but uh, we'd go out to the golf course. I remember when we went down to Myrtle Beach for a tournament, John. And uh, I mean, Junior, Turnsey was like Happy Gilmore. I mean, he had an unbelievable drive. Um, I mean, he, it was, I guess, all of his hockey training because he could, he could slap the golf ball. Now, it may go over a house over the next fairway, but then occasionally uh, he would hit one right down the middle and uh, would leave his dad and myself you know, standing way back. Um, but, uh, I mean, I've, I've, just, I've been listening uh, to, to all this tonight, and uh, it, uh, I'm sure it does John and Sue's heart, heart very good. It does mine great. Um, just to just to know what an impact he made uh, on so many people, and uh, you know the the smile was unbelievable. I just you know uh, I didn't know him like some of you guys did from Connecticut and from Charlotte, but uh, unbelievable uh, smile and, and charismatic way about him. Uh, but I, I love being around him. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to, I wanted to switch it over to golf just for a second because. Uh, uh, I know, uh, yeah, he wanted to be out there with his dad because his dad loves to play golf, and and uh, he didn't, he didn't, I can tell that he didn't love it like his dad did, but he he loved to get out there and show his dad up, and out driving by fifty yards. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, True anyway, story. good good stuff. Oh, thanks, thanks Doug. Doug. We love you. I love you too. I think uh, Zach. One of the things you could add to the the overall good notes is is the the storytelling. He would tell the kids these stories and be like, you know, hey, I did stupid things, and he'd tell you this hilarious story. 
gets everyone's attention and it was just hilarious and they weren't inappropriate and that's another thing is like if i started telling them i'd be like whoa 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 you can't tell kids that they were so appropriate i'm trying to hold back on some of them because they're not going to come out pretty good i'm telling them yeah <laughs> yeah oh it's just unbelievable i think so the, the real about- john is finally coming out well i um i think You're one good one. one that i can share is um it was i gotta say within the first week to two weeks john was living um at my house with my mom it was him myself and then no offense to pj but pj pinkerton he didn't him and i didn't really connect <laughs> with john. i mean the guys on here that play that team they know pj great guy but not not turnsy um so john and i i forget even how we met but we had come in contact with two girls who were sisters and i don't remember their names they weren't around long but long story short they came over to my mother's house and we didn't even introduce them to mom. And from then on, mom had a rule that if anybody came over the house as a female, she needed to get introduced and there you needed to be two feet on the ground at all times because she did not know who these girls were and didn't like that they didn't get introduced and they didn't really last too long. (laughs) Way to go, mom. Thanks, mom. (laughs) Betty was on lockdown. Betty, (laughs) that's right. Way to go, Betty. Um, I'll get some other stories. I'll chime in with them as we go along, but I'll just sit back and listen. Um, but again, there's a lot more. I think now we're up to 41. There was only 28 on, I think, when I spoke. But again, I played with John in Connecticut for a while, lived with him for the year. We played together um, and we always kept in contact. There was a time after when I was at Nichols playing uh, college hockey that he was, I think, living at John's or at John Sweeney's. And we, that he was leaving for the summer. Or I could, if the summer he was going to do his speed skating, I can't remember what it was, but made sure to go down. We had a night at John's house, hung out. I mean, I feel like it was yesterday. It was over 15 years ago now. Um, John was a great guy. I could go on with stories all day from different parts of life. I mean, even always just like just Sweeney said, he picks up right where you left off with him. You could have talked to him for, there was a time I think we didn't talk for, probably close to five years just where I was at my life wasn't a good place so I didn't really reach out to certain people and um, once I got myself back together he was one of the first people that I reconnected with and it was like I we connected it was no there were no hard feelings it was like hey life goes on what's where are you at now we kept talking and it continued to like I said this Monday when I was doing and all like and he didn't respond but that's neither here nor there I don't want to bring that up we're just trying to have good memories about I don't want to get anybody down especially you young guys um don't beat yourself up over it says i think kara had said like there's nothing you could have done to to help out in this situation people the mental health is a huge part of life and you young guys like the sooner you figure that out the mental health there's no stigma if something happens like it's okay to be upset to cry there's a lot of things that you can do um i forget the gentleman's name who was on. i think it might have been your brother john who was a uh, very emotional it's like it's okay to cry it's okay to, to be upset it's okay to do anything it's life like there's no handbook to life everyone has their own path to do whatever you guys who are in school prep school playing some hockey right now there's no path to get anywhere it's all what you're going to do and you're going to you're going to get out what you put in it's all the work you put in all the extracurricular stuff there's all these other demons if you want to call them there's everything out there there's all the stuff you have to there's no guidebook to life there's no way to tell you to do this or do that you can only figure it out by trial and error and if you want to ask me about trial and error i put my number out there i'm not going to get into myself but i can give you plenty of trials and tribulations on what i've done in my life and you can always improve on everything and even every day to day day by day you can improve yourself little goals set little goals and then those little goals will turn into big goals and then you're going to see things start to, to to happen for you it's like if you you always want this this one thing that you have that's out there that you want to get there and you try so hard and so hard to, to get it and somehow to, to it's going to happen. Just let things happen. Give it time. Life works itself out. Trust me. Yes. So I, my name is Rachel um, and Turnsy trained my, both my boys, um, Cameron and Dylan, uh, for many years. And I just want to let you know, he was a remarkable man. Um, I had my boys got knocked down. They didn't make a team. Turnsy would be, I would call Turnsy to say, I need some help. And he would be the first person to tell both of my kids, pick your chin up and get back on the ice. 
Um, he would be there every Monday and Tuesday at 7 a.m. Get him on the ice. And uh, he changed them to be better hockey players. And uh, I just want to give you kudos because he really is, he was a remarkable man. And I know our family will miss him terribly. Thank you so much for sharing that. Makes us feel so much better. He was a good person, a good soul. Great person. Yep. He Thank made us a he made us better hockey parents you know we've yes, got would, we've got all he would give oh. me uh weekly updates and uh i'm a little overbearing mom <laughs> so oh, no, um, no. <laughs> so i would text him and uh he would write back to me right away and cameron's doing great dylan's gonna do it and uh when he saw they were struggling he knew it he knew what to say and uh they just did it and, uh, you know, Dylan's 14, Cameron's 16. Um, so they're struggling a little bit, but, you know, they were at the ice today for Turnsey. They went to morning lessons uh, with Brendan. Um, uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they're doing it for him. Oh, God bless them. Let's keep up the good work. Yep. So I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Mr. And Mrs. Turner, I just wanted uh, something just came to my mind. I wanted to share with you guys. It, it uh, came up with uh, me and my family over this past holiday season. But John was the first one who introduced me to the Southern uh, boiled peanuts. And oh, really? I'm up. sorry. <laughs> you know, he, and I couldn't understand him when he was with his Southern accent. He was saying boiled peanuts. But he would say, you know, I thought he was saying bold, like something oh. in a bowl. And he's like, you guys don't have bold peanuts? I'm like, what the bold hell are you peanuts. talking about? Um, but since then, um, my, I have two older sisters. My middle sister, Erin, who was on the call last night. I think she's on again tonight. But um, she's four years older than me. And luckily, you know, know her. She got to know John. Um, she, when she graduated from the University of Connecticut, moved down to Alexandria, Virginia, where she still currently resides and has for you know, about 15 years. So she's become quite accustomed to boiled peanuts. Um, John was the first to introduce my family and now it's become a staple, not only in my sister's uh, household in Virginia, but my parents too in Connecticut. And um, my mother is the queen of all things, snacks and bowls everywhere in the house. You can't walk into a room without finding something to eat. And um, you know, John was uh, probably one of the first, well, is the first person whoever introduced my family, which has now become an ongoing staple in, in multiple family uh, households with boiled peanuts. And uh, just thought it was something silly. Just wanted to keep things a little light and uh, let you guys know that there's uh, remnants of him in every room and in multiple Sweeney households now because of him. <laughs> Unbelievable. Boiled peanuts. Ah. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Turner. I'm hey. Kent, I'm Kara's husband and Kate's dad. And um, just want to say thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> just want to say thank you for your son and uh, what he did in my, done in my son's life. Uh, Cade loves hockey, but he doesn't really like training and practices. Uh, not practices, but like, um, you know, skate training things. But with Turnsey, he always loved it. And I, I would hear about this Turnsey all the time. And he, he never um, was upset about, you know, going to practice or doing anything with Turnsey. And uh, so it was just such a special thing that he inspired my son so much. But I also wanted to share that uh, I only get to really talk to Turnsey once. And it was a pretty long conversation and I didn't have any expectations. I knew he had trained my son a lot. And as I talked to him, I just realized what a quality young man he was. And um, we talked further and we talked, we kept talking. It was so enjoyable to talk to. And uh, he talked about his faith and his strong faith in God. And that was such a joy that came out in him as he was speaking of that. So it was just a meaningful experience for me to talk to this young man and uh, just see what a fine young man he was. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You have yeah, I mean, no idea. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Neil Blazuski. I played for Turnsey as a coach for, I think, two to three seasons back. Uh, I'm 15 now. I think I may have been back. This is like when I was 11 or 12. And like, I, I, before before I played for him or knew Turnsey as a coach, like, I, I enjoyed the game and it was something I like liked to do and you know stuff I it was it was one of it was my hobbies it was something that I did as a kid, but he was the he he was the man yeah. that made me love the game. Like, every time I went to practice, I had a good time. I, I don't remember ever being upset. Like if if we lost a game or if we had a bad practice, he would say, "Hey guys, let's get it together. Let's do better next time." It was never what you didn't do. It was always what can we do, and I, I, I attribute of like where I am today, like all back to him. And it, it's tough that he's not here anymore. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. Sorry. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hey, Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you younger guys, I want to hear from. Hey, you. honey. Hi, my name is uh, Sven Dosh, and I worked with the Terency for about three years. Uh, he was the one that really made me enjoy the game. Like before I started uh, doing lessons with him, I really didn't enjoy hockey too much, and he he made me love the game. He he was so kind to me. Always made sure I had room for a lesson, even when I was terrible. He just he saw that I worked so hard. He just he didn't care if I was terrible or if I was the best player, he just loved that I had the work ethic and he, um, he always looked out for me. Like, even when I was having a bad day, he's, he'd always like cheer me up. Even if he got like three hours of sleep at 5 a.m. morning, he'd always come in with a giant smile on his face and say, we're ready to grind. And he was always so kind. Spenny, I, I want to let you know that uh, it's finally good to see your face. Um, John talks about all of his guys that he that he trains and would always tell me about how everybody's doing and all that. And he loved you so much. He loved he loved the time he had with you on the ice as well as the other boys. So I just want you to know that. Thank you. Um, to all you young guys out there, um, I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry who just spoke. Um, just because John's there doesn't mean you still can't have the same love for the game that he made it brought to you. Like he brought, showed you how to enjoy the game. Continue that on. Don't think because he's still not there to help you out with it. Take it on and motivate you to work even harder because he saw you had work ethic. Like you said, he, you may not have been the best or – but he saw something in you. And that's what like every one of us on this chat, there's 40 of us now. It's all because John saw something in each and every one of us. And there's probably more that could be on that aren't on tonight. Like he see John was a great reason, like the seven degrees of separation. There's a lot of people know John Turner um, and keep going, man. I don't know how old you are, but you love the game of hockey. Give it all you got, man. If you need help, we can get you contacts to do it, have find a new coach that cares about you just as much as John did. There's people out there that are, they might not be the same John, have the same heart he did, but they're going to give you the same thing John did. I, I have faith in that. If you need help finding coaches, let me know. I have friends that are still involved with hockey and I'm happy to help anybody. Thank you so much. I have, you're very welcome. And not just you, I have a lot of contacts more so in the New England area, but um, hockey's a small game and I'm happy to reach out and see who I can get to help in Charlotte, wherever you guys are located. I put my number out there again. Please let me know. I'm happy to help. What's nice for all you young guys that got to experience him as a coach is you're going to be taking all those lessons on with you. And whenever you do play or practice, you're going to, he's always going to be on your mind when you step on that ice, which is going to be nice for you guys. And you know, remember those most important things that he taught you was have fun, enjoy the game. Don't be mad at yourself. If, if you feel you could have done better, work a little harder next time. And just remember those points that he, he instilled in you every time you were on the ice together because they're all good lessons. And just keep them in your heart. Mm -hmm. but. Always, always. I'd like to speak out on pretty much for every female. I know he coached a few of us that I'm friends with. Um, he definitely impacted my life a lot the few times I got on ice with him. And I'd have to say without him, I probably wouldn't be in college playing hockey right now. 
And I know when I got the news, it it definitely was hard to sleep last night. But I think out of this, it's going to make us all a better person, I guess. But, you know, I'd like to say to the Turners, thank you so much for letting him coach us, giving us the ability to have him in our lives and just for him making us a better person in general. Thank you um, so very much. Thank you. Oh thank you guys. And good luck. Yeah. Good luck, hard work. I'd love to just like piggyback off the uh, it tells uh, what some of these people have been saying, but um, I'm a few years removed from hockey at this point, but um, I had been playing less than a year um, at for house league in uh, Pineville and I was about ready to just call it. I was just playing for fun, had a hobby like the sport and uh, he pulled me aside after one of those games. It was going to be one of my last and uh, recruited me to come play for a little uh, travel team that he was putting together and, and uh, he saw that I wasn't necessarily up to the caliber but that I had potential and he uh, met with me all the time uh, before practice after practice and uh, off days and everything and, and coached me up to being a player and kept me playing for uh, up until I was no longer eligible for USA hockey after that and um, he ignited a passion for the game and really pretty much taught me everything I know about the sport and uh, I'd see him around the rink even after I was uh, done playing and he was always uh, doing the same for other people touching the lives of everyone and one of the most charismatic guys that I know and, and really uh, selfless and just wanted to throw that little anecdote in there but just thank you Ryan thank you so much for sharing. rest in peace thank you Yeah, and I want to say to, um, I've talked to several today, several of the younger guys that are either off at prep school, um, travel or college. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of staying connected, but, you know, try to, try to always think like one step outside of your own little world, you know, um, reach out and embrace each other as family. You know, I know my own son, even he had, there's one other boy um, in Nashville with him from Charlotte here. And they were able to, you know, they're not roommates right now, but he, they were able to sleep together last night. And then I heard my son going like, can I ride with you during work tomorrow? You know, can I just ride in the car with you just to be together? I mean, so they're lucky they at least have each other. And I know they immediately wanted to come home next weekend just to come home, you know, and just probably go back to the rink, go back to their home, you know, um, and to start working through the process a little bit. Um, but yeah, stay connected, stay connected, reach out um, to other people and don't think of other people of like, oh, wait, they're not my same age. They're not my same, weren't on the same team or connection. I mean, the people that are on here, the people at New Turnsey, we're family, you know, and we are a team now. And Zach, I love it that, you know, you're telling these guys to reach out and giving them your number. I mean, take that, Take that seriously, guys. guys. I know most of you probably won't. One already has Kyle. Um, reach out, guys. I'm serious. 100%. Gabe, I see you there. Um, reach out to me, buddy. I'm here. Um, I know life sucks. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, that's what we got to make the most of what we have while we're here. It's too short. I was. <laughs> I, I, I wish I got on the call last night to hear everyone what they said. Um, I got on late. I wouldn't have been able to speak. I, I got Sue's number last night late. John and I were trying to finagle out how to get the numbers. All the numbers we had, no one has landlines. When we were playing, we had landlines. I remember as soon as I got found John's, like, the home number, I'm like, that's the number registered in my head, the number. But it, it wasn't the number, so I couldn't even leave Sue a voicemail, like, without you getting choked up. So I wouldn't have been able to speak. Obviously, things settle in. Um, for you younger guys, it's going to take a little bit longer. Um you're going to be okay. Your careers are going to be okay. Everything with you will be okay. Everything is going to work out fine. Please take me up on it. Reach out to me. Um, I have a lot of friends, like I said, that are still involved with hockey. Um, we can find out something you need if you're in the Boston area. I have a good network of people in that area as well. 
Um, and also some of you guys who might not have been before, I'm, I live on Nantucket now with my family as a restaurant. Um, if you need summer summer job to get out, there's a men's league out here. It's pretty competitive. It's not going to be checking or anything, but it's pretty competitive. You can get that. There's places to train. There's stuff you need. You can make it work if you need to get, get out, if you don't want to go home because it's bad thoughts, whatever. If you need a place to say, reach out to me, guys. I'm here. It's 30 miles off of the coast of Hyannis. You have to take a ferry to get here, but we, we'll figure it all out if you need help, guys. Happy to help with anybody. I'm not just saying it. Mm -hmm. Leave him. <laughs> oh, believe me, my phone's my phone's always on. I, my wife says I have a problem with my phone. I'm always on it. She texts me. I'm happy, to help, guys. happy to help. Gabe, you can't sleep, buddy. Text me. Anything we can talk, whatever you want, pal. I know you're hurting. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Turner was a great buddy. One of the best. Thank you. I know there's several guys on here that aren't sleeping yet. Yeah, I, I know. I don't. I only. I'm not picking on you, Gabe, but you're right in my screen, my my wheelhouse, and I can see a bunch of other guys out there. I just see. Names. I'm not good with names. Um, Billy O, John Billy Oris. We should hear a comment from him as well. He uh, he was on the whalers with us. He was a great guy. Him and Sweeney, I think, went to college together. Played a little bit of hockey there. He and Rose got some good stories. Um, he was. John's a great guy as well. John Billy Orris. That whole team was still a great guy. I could go down that roster with guys and just tell you probably my, everything about them still. And that was 20, almost 20 years ago now. We're getting close to it. It's like that was a great time, guys. Hockey's a great, great time in your life. Go as far as you can with it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Believe in yourselves. Turner's, um, my name's Sue Wakefield. My son, Ben, uh, worked with Turnsey um, before Tactical Advantage started. We were we um, were introduced to him by Greg Dratty, and he, he credited his son's amazing success to Turnsey and said, you got to meet this guy. And the first experience Ben had, um, and you'll, you boys will probably find this funny, uh, they were getting ready for checking he was a peewee and so they were doing some drills to prepare them for body contact and ben is now a 15 year old six foot three hundred and eighty five pound kid he's always been big and he was big back then and uh so ben kind of skated towards turnsey and turnsey gave him a little nudge and ben skated right through and they did that a couple more times and ben said come on hit me so <laughs> John was not one to back down from that. <laughs> fast forward a few hours and we were at the emergency room just making sure that Ben didn't have a concussion. Oh God. <laughs> and, and I had forgotten all about that story, but I just, you know, thinking back over Ben's history working with your son, it just made me laugh so hard. And um, it did not deter Ben for one second from wanting to go back and work with Turnsey again. And, um, you know, he was a, a peewee when he started. Yeah. He's a 16 U now. He was a boy when he started with your son and he's a young man now. And I just can't tell you how much of an influence he was on Ben in that transition. And I'm, he was a, he doesn't, Ben doesn't have older brother. He has an older sister and that's just not the same. And, um, he, we will always remember, um, Turnsey for the, the effect and the way he shaped Ben in the most positive way. And the one other story I want to share with you is just, I remember maybe a year into Ben working with him, we were back home in Canada and he was at a hockey camp for the summer. And I was kind of sending some videos and updates to Turnsey. And every time he signed off with me, he'd say, I love you guys. And I remember being so taken aback that someone that a man at that age would be so open-hearted and expressive. And he was always that way, just, you know, love you guys. And, and so I started saying, we love you too. And it was just such a special, unique thing for a coach to be that expressive. And um, our hearts are still open for your son. I'm so, so grateful to finally see both of you and meet both of you. And I just want to thank you for, um, the uh, impact he's had on my son becoming a man and that will always be with him and he will that is that is your son's legacy is and I know Ben is one of so many who can say the same thing and I just I just want that 
you know, to know that for us, that's your, the legacy of Guernsey. It's so very nice to see you. I've not even meeting Ben. I think I know him. Uh, from <laughs> Johnny talking about him. So um, thank you. We love to share all the little things that all the kids were doing. Mm -hmm. And the, there's a whole group of, um, of boys who are all on the ice practicing right now. Match is sitting in the parking lot. <laughs> but I, yes. I, had to, I had to join in. And one other thing that I, I made clear to him, you know, Ben was part of the team that should have gone to nationals last year and got to go the year before. And I always told him, you know, you had so much, you didn't get the glory as the coach, but he was a huge part of both of those teams success and they couldn't have done it without him. It was really unsung here, those teams. And I know any, if any of the boys from that team are on listening, they're nodding their heads right now saying that's true. 100% anyway. true. Thank you so much for those kind words. Thank you. Taking those glasses off, old man. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you there, CJ. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Hey, Coach. Hi. How are you? We're hanging in there. What's up, Coach? Sucks to have to talk in a situation like this, but uh, uh, not much. Is, you can't say enough about John Turner. I had the privilege of coaching him. In junior, <laughs> yeah, it's like a... feel you, brother. It's okay, man. We're here with you, coach. We're here with you, brother. He's a fucking John is a was a superstar. I love that kid. Fucking positive to the end. From the day I met him, I know he had a lot of medical conditions back then. Uh, he had a freaking bag full of medications. He had to take at all times. And but his fucking desire to be an athlete and compete and, and fight never stopped him. And uh, that's why I admire all. Like when I see John Turner, I just see a smiling face and uh, beautiful guy, beautiful individual. Uh, just honored to have been able to spend a little bit of time with him and I love him forever. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you so much. God bless you. I know it hurts. Yeah. yeah, nothing to beat his stride in skating, that's for sure. He, he didn't have the biggest <laughs> legs, but that was going to come out of the field. Quit hopping to go speed skating. It was like a roll with Shawnee Davis, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> No one could be like, <laughs> like, who does that? I think I said it before. You're the, the best uh, pure stride and power skating stride you'll ever see. Uh, yeah. An unbelievable talent in the skating department. Hard to believe that uh, North Carolina produced that, but they did. Yeah. <laughs> Florida, too, actually. There you go. Mm. So Kyle Moore, not to pick on you. And then his screen just went dark. Do you have a do you have a Turnsy story for us? Uh, I think I have more than one, but hey, Kyle. Hey, but, uh, yeah, I lived with Turnsy actually this summer for a little bit, and he's known my middle brother since he was four years old, and he's twenty six now. So I've known Turnsy my whole life. Um, it's kind of a crazy little hockey story. This summer, we had like a scrimmage, all the boys, and me and Turnsy were on the same team and we're in a battle on the wall. And I was the center. I was coming through the low support. He was a winger, and I clipped his leg. I broke his leg. You're the one. Sorry? Yeah, his leg. Oh, no, I remember when he broke it, when he told me. I was like, what are you doing out there still skating? You're too old. Yeah, and he, he broke it, and I'm going down for a breakaway, and all I hear is screaming, and I turn around, I was like, oh, shit. And <laughs> I go back, and he's like, it's broken, it's broken. And 30 seconds later, he's walking on it. It's not broken. It's okay. It's okay. It's just, it just hurts. <laughs> then he goes and gets the x-ray, he broke it. 
And then a week later, he's in the gym with us, trying to squat with us with a broken leg. And <laughs> like Valley Cat and Griffin Clark, they were right there with me. Griffin's our trainer, and he just had the dedication. He always wanted to get better, and he would do whatever it takes. And it's crazy. With the broken leg, he was trying to squat with us. It just shows his passion for the game. He was living normally with a broken leg, trying to skate if he could. If he could buy a skate for a boot, he would have. Doesn't matter how bad it hurt. We we literally told him, "Hey, you can't put your skates on for your lessons." So we had to tell him. <laughs> we we got him a chair and those things that go on the bottom of your shoes, with the spikes to slide around, and that's what he did shoes. for a couple of weeks. <laughs> An ice boot. But, uh, so I don't know if you Whalers guys know this, and I'm not advocating this to any of the young guys, but that year that in between we went and played for the Huskies and. New, uh, you know, New England. He played the first month with pneumonia and didn't tell anybody. Until he it's funny you out. say that, uh, Mr. Turner. I remember uh, driving up to uh, the Walpole, you know, Metro Boston area when he was on the New England Huskies. And um, growing up, I played on a, at a team called the Worcester Crusaders in the Metro Boston Hockey League. And a former team of teammate of mine uh, ended up on the New England Huskies with John. So I drove up to link up with both of them and, you know, John kind of told me in confidence and I just watched him play a full game and you would never have, you know, even known that he even had a, you know, common cold, let alone pneumonia. And I think at that time he didn't even know he had pneumonia, but he, he was pretty damn sick and uh, testament to what he battled, you know, through and the love for the game that he had. And as uh, Craig Johnson said before, just uh, an athlete who just wanted to compete and would do it at all costs, you know? Warrior, true warrior. The guy was a warrior. I mean, I mean, nobody nobody would think he was a tough guy, but if you got in a battle on the ice, John Turner would dive right in there, take a few punches and then beat, but he'd take him for you if you had to, you know what I mean? That's the kind of teammate he was. He's a warrior. Uh, yeah. The kind of guy you'd love to go into battle with because uh, no matter what shit hits the fan, he's going to be there right beside you, so... Love the kid. I'll touch yeah. on that too. Just not even being a teammate, just being a brother to him. He would do anything for his brothers, no matter what time it is. One time I've called him at 4 a.m. waking him up. I was downtown drunk and I told him I needed a ride. He came down and got me at 4 a.m. He had a lesson at 6 a.m. and he was there to pick me up. He would do anything for whoever he cared for. And he's just a great guy. For you Whaler guys, I don't know if you remember, we were in, uh, I remember it clear as day because uh, I think at that time John was still living with me and my folks, but um, we were up in Waterlooville, New Hampshire. And for those of you who don't know, I know many of you are down south. It's a pretty cool place, you know, mostly a ski resort town, but, um, you know, they used to host some hockey tournaments up there and it's pretty remote. And the team up there was, you know, they were okay. But um, we used to kind of just go up there and ragdoll them and, and beat them up pretty good. And they'd take offense to it. So they had some tough guys on their team. And uh, we were older, stronger, faster. And Turner was certainly known more for his skill than his, uh, his grit and his uh, muscle. But um, you know, there was an instance when he was on the ice and he took offense to something somebody did and uh, played hockey with him for two years and only saw him fight once. But this was one of them or I guess the only instance, and he ended up fighting a guy, and uh, Turner didn't wait for the kid at the time. It was somewhat customary if you actually squared up to fight that you take <laughs> off your own helmet. Well, Turner didn't wait for the kid to take off his helmet, punched him right in his cage, and uh, split his own knuckle wide open down to the uh, the ligament. Oh. And, uh, I remember that. I remember, I remember <laughs> he kept throwing, though, you know? And... Uh, <laughs> He was so hopped up on adrenaline. Craig, I see you uh, laughing about it. I'm sure you remember. And, you know, for somebody who came from North Carolina, I mentioned this before, the balls it takes to come from a market like that, um, step up and, and play with a bunch of crazy Yankees and Canadians. You got Trent Lahash, Craig Johnston, Canadian guys. You know, he was up there throwing knuckles and uh, literally split open his knuckle down to the, the tendon. And he was so fired up and happy that he stuck up for his teammate. He didn't even realize he had split open his hand. He was just, before he even went to the penalty box, he came by the bench. It probably was the first fight he had ever gotten in. 
and he was just so jazzed up to defend a teammate and be there for his guys. He didn't even realize that his hand was absolutely mangled. And then once he got to the penalty box, he realized, hey, I need some help here. And um, his, his hand was, was split up pretty good. It, but it I wouldn't stop bleeding, eh? I out of that one because uh, he's probably the last guy on the bench you'd look to to fight. But it's a testament to his willingness to you know, stick up for himself, his teammates, and just compete. And um, he didn't even realize it for a while. He was just immediately there um, for a teammate. And it just speaks to who he was and how he valued the game and, and the boys he played alongside with. Beautiful story. Good stuff right there. Well, was that the game uh, when the state troopers had to come in? The train was that we had a few of those, that, I think. I think if state troopers had to come in, you were probably the driver. That was that. a Salem, remember? We got escorted out of the arena. Yeah, that was another yeah, one. That was yeah. another good day. That brawl, that was pretty wild. <laughs> After me, Rocco Heads. Yeah. For you young guys, that was all group of barbarians. It's changed a lot. It's all skill and speed now, but it used to be a jungle, baby. Oh, boy. We had a group mm. of barbarians. We would all been thrown out of hockey today. Yeah. <laughs> you guys continue to beat up on them over the years. So I'm looking at the puck here. 2016-17 Pee Wee A team. Gabe was on this team. And he tell me stories. He goes, you know, they were, they come out sleepy in the morning games, good in the afternoon. You know, they're kids. And uh, he'd say, I always either like to really give someone a good hit or take a good hit. It gets me going in the game. And he's saying this after he'd been playing – pickup hockey and got a puck in the face his eye is looking god awful yellows and greens and blues and all swollen <laughs> i remember that game his face was all messed up and and swollen and he's just like you know take one get into it we're like that looks like it hurts he's like oh now go on we'll play we're good <laughs> <laughs> hey, i'm like what were you guys doing to him these are fun pickup games and he's coming with a puck in the face i'm like oh good god <laughs> for you younger guys on the call um I know, uh, I think it was Zach Lindsay mentioned, you know, some of the sports psychology, mental preparation and mental side of, of both hockey and life, quite frankly. Um, a lot of which, you know, John, myself, Trent Lahash and Zach had the opportunity to, to really be introduced and learn from Craig Johnson, who was our coach on the Connecticut Junior Whalers. Can't see him because he won't turn his light on. Oh, yeah, well, I don't want to. I don't want to be seen crying. You got his snapshot just of me crying over here. Back. I can't have that out there on the, but, on the world hey, wide web. <laughs> I guess my point is, is, is Craig was a, a big driver of introducing us to that aspect of the game, and I think all of us. You heard Zach speak on it. You're hearing me speak on it now. It was a huge, uh, you know, kind of eye-opening experience, if you will, and for all of us, myself included, and that's why I'm speaking on it now. And mental health has come a long way. And I think there's obviously, it's, it's kind of like a, la uh, you know, layers to an onion. Uh, there, there's a lot of it that goes into it. You know, it's not just your mental health day to day. There's mental preparation, all of these things. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Craig Johnson was our coach on the Connecticut Junior Whalers, a highly accomplished professional player, an incredible coach. Uh, I owe a lot to him for what he taught me both on and off the ice. 100%. And when I speak to things he taught me off the ice, um, I mean some of the intangible things, things that uh, you're not going to see on TV or things that might not uh, be X's and O's on a, on a, on a board or on a, a drill chart. But I'm sure Craig or, you know, we'd be happy to, I know Zach already offered up his contact information. A lot of this mental health stuff and uh, sports psychology, mental preparation stuff, even if you're not struggling with anything, just the mental preparation, the, the power of your mind, um, I can't you know, uh, co-sign and, and, and really suggest you guys look into that to help your hockey game uh, more. It's been one of the most, or was one of the most impactful things on uh, my hockey career. Uh, I thank Craig for introducing me to that and you know, we're happy you joined the call. But if you guys are, are you know, looking to kind of get, gain an edge. Obviously, you guys were getting coaching from Turner and trying to better yourself. It's a huge aspect of it, man. And, um, you know, Craig was a big driver of that at a time when nobody was really talking about it or thinking about it. And now it's not only more acceptable, I think you're probably far behind if you're not thinking about those types of things in your game. So, you know, we can link up with Craig and have him share some things that he thinks might record 
that he recommend books, podcasts, what, what have you, but um, definitely something for you younger guys to think about, especially guys that took themselves and their career seriously enough to uh, seek out coaching and tutoring from Turner because absolute game changer and uh, completely changed myself. And, you know, a lot of these guys on the call. I totally agree. It's all above the shoulders, boys. The whole game is above the shoulders. Everybody's got two arms, two legs, one heart. We all got the same tools, but the big difference is above the shoulders. Believe in yourself, the confidence, the goals. You can't go through life without goals, guys, because then you're going in no direction. You got to have a direction. So set your goals, think about them every day, and keep working towards them. Just like our boy JT, man. The guy was always hustling. I loved his Instagram page. Loved seeing him work with the young guys he was working with. Uh, I was, I mean, I loved every every video we posted. You saw the passion and desire he had to nurture the young talent out there in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, uh, it was just a great thing to see. So this showed what the guy was all about. And uh, I think that's what our whole team was about back then. We had a... You know, I was lucky to recruit a bunch of great kids with, uh, and I was able to give them a little something, whether it was mentally, physically, whatever it was. But, uh, you know, it's they're the ones that wanted to take it to the next level. And uh, today it's, it's just a blessing to see uh, where these guys are today and, you know, fathers and parents and business owners and uh, everything. It's just a beautiful thing. So, uh, that's the gifts that the game of hockey has given us all. So uh, cherish it. It's a beautiful thing. The friendships that you make here uh, last forever. I mean, I had these guys for some of these guys for six months of hockey and uh, to be able to still be bonded here on Facebook chats and uh, just to have that brotherhood live on forever is something very, very special. Hey coach, I'm going to, ask you if you'd potentially be open to um, maybe if we could set up another call with these young athletes. I know these young athletes that are still playing um, probably feel like they just had the rug pulled out from under them. You know, um, I know they're all each have separate coaches, but Turnsey was their, their backbone. Yeah. I mean, the way the games transition too, I think, um, from what I hear from friends still, it's everyone has their own individual skill coach now, a personal coach or a mental coach. Everyone's got their own. You have your head coach and then everyone's got their own guy. So yeah, they, their carpet's been pulled out from under them per se. So I, I that's yeah. why I want to reach out to me. We can get Craig involved as well now that he's Same on there. Here. I'm here uh, to do whatever I can. That's what I said. I'm to do anything for these kids, man. Yeah. And I know a lot of them, um, you know, are getting ready to play this weekend um, or even tomorrow. You know, the weekends are pretty busy. Guys, I don't know if you, if there's a night that's better, if like Monday night, is that a low kind of regroup? For me, whatever works for you, works for me. Know, I'll, I'll make it happen. So Yeah, we're, I'm not care. doing anything. Um, I, you have my number, I think, Kara. Yeah. I can I can give you Craig's as well. We can get a Zoom together or what. I'm happy to yep. be on it as well. Um, yeah. Okay, then I think that would be fantastic. If you guys would be open to it. Definitely. Okay. And I'll turn on, I'll turn on the lights for that one. <laughs> you don't even have to talk turns so you don't have to be fair but uh i i think it would be a great source of hope for these guys that kind of feel that way yeah does anybody else then have anything that they want to say quickly while we kind of Oh, there's some lights. There's some lights. There's a coach. I got the bucket on for the crew. <laughs> Yay. I got the shirt. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I thank you. Thank you for being here. And I know, I know for these younger guys, they're a little bit quieter, but they're, they're fighting tears on a, on a nonstop basis these days right now. And uh, yeah. We're all in survival mode, but but I'm proud of them. They're going to go out and they're going to play this weekend for Turnsey, right? And again, guys, don't expect to be at your peak, and that's okay. You know, we're all in our individual individual place going through through trauma, and it's going to take time. But just because you're not at your peak this weekend doesn't mean you're not going to be at your peak. Um, you know, two weeks from now, a month from now, 
you know, it's just going to be baby steps, right? But I want to really let you guys, I did want to let you guys know, I spoke to Brendan today and they got help. They got stickers for all the helmets for the boys. Mm -hmm. um, and that's coming in tomorrow. And it's going to have his initials with his advanced tactical advantage on it. Um, so all the boys will have stickers on their helmets this weekend. Great. That's awesome. Awesome. Would yes. you maybe awesome. want to check and see about these guys that are traveling and are away, if there's a way we can coordinate getting them stickers? Well, I think um, the only team that's away right now um, is the 12 AA. Um, I believe everyone is leaving probably I know my boys are home um, and they're Wait, so we're talking about kids though, like Tommy and Kate and Mason who aren't in Charlotte anymore. Gabe, and like all or the, you know, Mason, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love one. I can, I can ask Brendan, um, but he just That'd mentioned awesome. that all the uh, stickers will be in tomorrow for the weekend. I can see Mason shaking his head. I know the guys would love them. It would be a nice touch. And then, and then especially up here in the lakes regions when the kids play each other, they can yeah. have their, their turnsy together. And they have a really nice memorial in the uh, front lobby. It's beautiful. It was really nice. I wish we could get down to Charlotte. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to Brendan as well and see if we can do anything about the stickers and see what he says. And I'll get back to some of the guys. Griffin. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much for setting up the call. I appreciate it. Yes. Yes, this has been so much. Fantastic for us. And the Turners. Yeah. Look at John. Jim. And maybe we'll try to do it again once next week, you know, um, and include the Turners. But yeah, definitely if we could get something with some of you guys to help mentor some of these younger guys a little bit. Um, that would be awesome. And Brendan and Danielle and I, Ross, we're, we're still trying to come up with some kind of a, a service or just some kind of an event that we can do in this COVID world. Um, and we're still waiting for Johnny to have all his things completed, if that makes any sense. Um, and so we just don't have any answers right now, but as soon as we do, we will share it ASAP. Well, I was, I was, I was talking to a bunch of uh, the old Whalers players, and I was I suggested maybe we could do like um, a golf tournament in the summer if we all can't get together now because of COVID and whatnot. Maybe we could do a golf tournament in his remembrance, you know. And maybe we were thinking that also in the summer with maybe like a. Uh, even down south, like a memorial game. Yeah, that's it. That's something. what I was thinking. We could all meet in North Carolina or something and play at one of his favorite yeah. That would be awesome. I was going to raise him like a hockey game at the range or something in remembrance of him. Yeah. Well, if you guys all want to do it together, that would be pretty awesome too, you know. Yeah. Well, if we could arrange it. And... We're in. All, all, you, all you Connecticut guys, we have room here. Thank you. Don't, don't bite off too much more than you can chew, big guy. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but for sure, like, down, we're, we're all talking. We want to do something for him, you know, and so maybe make it an annual thing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what we were thinking, maybe an annual tournament or something. That'd yeah, be great. Cool. And maybe have it. This is just a, a, uh, an idea. Uh, have it fund, um, you know, mental health or addiction or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ernie for Turnsy. Yes. Good yeah. one. Just want you to know, we're have, I'm sure we're all going to be thinking about them every day. I, I know I will. Every day. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. When again, guys, um, there's going to be good moments and there's going to be bad days, and we're all we're all in this together, you know. So don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us. Peaks and valleys. Don't let your highs get too low. Don't let your lows get too low. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Turner's again, thank you so much for thank you. Thank you, everybody that's on the call. It it's, means the world to us. Yeah. 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 And all the time you've put into this. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, it's it's the least we can do to give back a little bit for all turns he gave and invested into each one of us and our kids and the friendships, you know. Let me pray real quickly again. Uh, okay. okay. Dear God, just thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you for all the people that are able to be here. Um, and we thank you for Turnsey Lord. We thank you for the life and the spirit that you gave him and how he impacted each one of us. Um, I pray now, God, that you comfort us. You comfort us through community, um, through this family. And I know these days are gonna seem really, really long. Um, but I just pray that we can experience your comfort as we walk through them. I uh, pray that each night will get a little bit easier to sleep and that you can uh, restore our bodies so that we can be physically strong enough to take on the next day. Thank you for loving us, God, in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And um, so, Zach, I'll be in touch with you and we'll set up something maybe with a coach's call on Monday. And then we'll see how the week goes, but hopefully next week, maybe Turner's, if you're up to it, maybe we could do another group call even. It's fine. We're, we're, you don't know how therapeutic this is for me, and I'm sure Sue too. Good. Well, I think for a lot of us. Yes. We can steal a phrase from Turner and say, love you guys. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Welcome. Thank you all so much. See you, Sebi. Love all you guys. Be good. <laughs> Thank you. It was really good to hear all of it. God bless. Thank you for this, guys. It was really uh, felt great talking a little bit about the guy. So a great day. Great Thank seeing you. you again, Coach. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. night, all. And yeah. we'll talk again soon. I'm looking forward right. to it. Look forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.